Great. So welcome everybody. And uh, as soon as uh, Jane has fully appeared, we'll get going. Thank you all for coming. There's Jane. Hi, can you see me now? There you are, Jane. Hello. Hi, and hi. good afternoon. Sorry, it's a bit late. That's all right. In these crazy times. So, just to say good afternoon and welcome. And uh, it's great to see you all and to be able to hold this annual event, even though we're not able to meet in a, you know, personally as we usually are. But it's uh, great to be able to come together and recognize some absolutely fabulous individuals who've gone above and beyond. Um, before we start, I want to say that the event um, may possibly run till about 5.15 and also that we're recording the event. If there's anyone who doesn't want to be recorded, please let us know either by email or in the chat and then we can um, address that. And I know this has been a, a very challenging year, that's a great understatement, that everyone on this call and some others who are not at this event have gone way above and beyond their normal roles and the, the way that they work so have um, adapted to this new way of working that we have been experiencing. So following the Pathway Conference in March last year we saw and many on this course were part of a pan London response to COVID with a massive mobilization in just two weeks to ensure that people sleeping rough were moved into accommodation that was safe and secure, as well as having support available to them in um, both food, but distraction packs, substance misuse services, mental health. So it was massive, um, that mobilization and the people that were involved. And over 5,000 people were moved during that time into self-contained accommodation across London. So largely into uh, hotels, which was nice for people. The guidance, test, triage and care was rapidly developed and implemented in both hotels and hostels. And then the COVID care and COVID protect sites were also set up rapidly to ensure that people experiencing <coughs> homelessness and staff were protected as well. There are those who are at this event who also developed an immediate health response, which was vital in conducting health assessments, health checks, symptom checks, tests for COVID, making sure people could access medication and prescriptions, uh, getting access to substance misuse services, um, and also wider health interventions. And also that they could access on-site physical, mental health and substance misuse services and support. And people on this call provided leadership at a strategic level to ensure that this happened. So we've quite key in raising the issues, being fantastic advocates, as well as um, the other nurses, doctors, other partners, all working together to ensure healthcare was accessible and was of a continuing high standard. Individuals worked, dealt with many issues and challenges to get services up and running. And some of those challenges, I remember, were huge, you know, and, um, and, and some of the systems at that time were not in place. But due to the work of people on this call, those systems were rapidly put up. And so talking to the GLA, the Healthy London Partnership uh, were absolutely key and to raise issues and make sure they were addressed. Extremely long hours were worked. And I know that. And I know um, particularly um, nurses were often on site for long, long hours working in full PPE as well. So we also saw fantastic partnership working both in hotels and on the street and, um, and in hostels. Um, the work was intense, it was challenging, we know that, it was exhausting. And of course, many also had other childcare and caring issues and personal issues that they were also having to juggle all at the same time. So it was just an amazing, amazing response and one that should never ever be forgotten. And we also had uh, new people who, um, who we love and um, who also died during that time. So some of us had to experience 
the experience of bereavement and grief at the same time. So it has been and continues to be a challenging time, but we do have systems more in place now. And this has been unprecedented. That's a word the government likes to use a lot. For all of us, we have seen such courage, commitment, bravery, compassion, kindness, those who went above and beyond their roles, from nurses, healthcare staff, peer advocates, frontline staff, um, not only have we seen such exemplary care for people experiencing homelessness, but also care and concern towards colleagues. I know that at times this has been costly for people and we recognise and acknowledge that. Was I surprised to see the response and the qualities that we saw um, in, in ourselves and in colleagues? No, I wasn't surprised because I've seen those qualities in previous years by nurses, healthcare workers and other frontline staff providing healthcare to people who are experiencing homelessness and other forms of exclusion and also other frontline staff providing healthcare to people who are experiencing homelessness and particularly the nurses who work in this area, they were able to respond quite rapidly because some of the situations we saw were not something that was new to them you know they've been at the front line been innovative creative have had to work in very different situations that is the norm in in healthcare um, the caliber has been consistently so high which has been um, also uh, we've seen in previous years and that hadn't changed even though we were in the middle of a pandemic the care that was given was consistently really high However, this year people have gone well above and beyond which would normally be expected of them. And again, we've seen that bravery, courage and tenacity to keep going even when things were tough and there was fatigue, um, you know, and you could just cry. And I know um, there, were, there were tears and everyone has been absolutely fabulous in what they've done. And the actions, and we know that the actions that were taken at that time save lives and continue to save lives so getting people into accommodation providing that healthcare and ongoing healthcare support we've seen people make choices healthy choices and their lives have changed and are continuing to change and will change in the future this afternoon we are recognizing some individuals that have been nominated by colleagues and um and this is in recognition a recognition for what they have done during the last year, but particularly the last 10 months. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to Sam and we'll start the proceedings. So thank you. Okay, so thank you, Jane. I'm going to try and share my screen. Um, has that worked? Has that worked? I can't hear anybody. Yes, if I have problems. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this is a very quick introduction, I promise you. So just five minutes. So why are we having these ABFAB awards? And obviously, firstly, um, it's because we, the trustees, all want to be Patsy and Eddie, or certainly I do anyway. But um, I just, oh, we just wanted to say, I can't get the next slide up. Yeah, we just wanted to say that this isn't really about doing anything new or different like the Nursing Times, Nursing Standard, HSJ. It's really about recognising people doing their existing job really, really well. And we just wanted a chance for colleagues to be able to tell people that they're really special. Um, a chance to be able to acknowledge people just going over and above in their ordinary jobs. And also a chance for people to be able to tell other colleagues that we really couldn't do our jobs without them. And the first one we did, so I think, um, I think I can't remember, we had about four or five nominations, but um, we gave it to Dennis Rogers. Everybody will know Dennis Rogers um, here from Groundswell. It couldn't have been anyone else. Um, and it made us feel, you know, really good as well as him, I hope. So there you go. Unfortunately, I don't have any really good photos from the next year. Um, if anybody does, let me know. They're all blurry, but we gave two. And then in the following year, um, 
I think we had about 12 nominations, but we decided to give five. And um, some of you will recognise Eileen Sullivan on the end there, who I think we also gave a bottle of champagne to her for her long service running the chip service. And we all miss Eileen. Um, She's doing great it, work over here. Sorry? She's still working in homelessness and being amazing. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, and then it just got to the stage where we couldn't decide in that so many of the nominations that we received sort of met the criteria um, that we were talking about that we actually felt wasn't really very reasonable <laughs> to decide and that we should just give everybody that award because it was about recognising people. So just to you who are here today, um, I think we have received less nominations than we sometimes might have done, but obviously we understand why, because people are very, very busy. So for you, someone, you know, people have bothered to, to, to make the effort to do a video or to tell us how they feel about you. So it's really, really important. Um, and this is them giving you and us giving you a virtual hug. And um, I also realised that, um, so hopefully everybody who has been given an award has actually got their award, but if not, I know at least one person on this call has received it and can show you. Um, but we'll also send you a certificate for revalidation purposes as well. Now, as Jane said, before we go on, I suppose it's really, really important to acknowledge that there's lots of people on this call, um, you know, and lots of people who aren't on this call because they aren't able to be on this call, um, who are also amazing. And we salute them as well, obviously, um, you know, and nurses, allied professionals, doctors, groundswell peers, health support workers, so many people have been operational sort of across the sector, often as volunteers in so many areas of work. Um, so it's really important to acknowledge them all. Um, I I've only got a few photos, sorry, there's other people coming in. Um, but there's some lovely photos here. This is the Westminster Homeless Health Team doing street triage by bike. Um, it's actually me, but as part of the, the Great Chapel Street outreach team going out to Northwest London hotels doing assessments. Um, the inevitable Al and the uh, Medicine Sans Frontier team at Covid Care. Um, Rachel and Megan, who I believe were on the call doing vaccination at the Ace of Clubs recently, brilliantly did 30 in that day. Um, the lovely testing team. So. It's just important to know that there's so many examples of people being brilliant at the moment um, and that we know that that brilliance has saved lives, which is brilliant. So, you know, this Lancet article um, estimates that the the overall test triage cohort care has saved around 266 deaths across England. And that's probably about 80 in London alone. And also to acknowledge uh, lots of the amazing health visitors. Obviously, I'm not a health visitor and I look ridiculous in this photo, but um, lot, just the London health visitors have done amazing work um, with homeless families in temporary accommodation, uh, raising the profile of the desperate plight of families in temporary accommodation. So really important to acknowledge them as well. So in summary, um, there's lovely Eileen again um, and Jamil. This was just a, a big clap to everybody before we hand over. Um, so now, drum roll, I'm going to hand over to Chris. Um, but just important to acknowledge that this has been made possible by the London Housing Foundation and NHS England, the Safeguarding um, Directorate. OK, so Chris, oh, hello. over to you. Hi, thanks very much. Uh, Sam and Jane. So I'm going to start the uh, actual proceedings of the uh, award giving. I'm going to attempt to turn on my special awards background, but it is going to make my face largely disappear. Um, that's not intentional, but you know, there you go. Cool. So um, straight in, um, our first award um, is being given to Sue Boren. Um, who's been nominated by Jane. Um, Sue Boren's a senior fellow at the HEA um, and is also the director of nursing programmes at the 
Queen's Nursing Institute. Um, so Jane, if you are able to just say a few words about why you've nominated Sue and then hopefully oh, yeah. we'll hear from Sue. And yeah, if people want to kind of visually clap, that's lovely. I think all unmuting ourselves will just be a nightmare. So you can, you know, that wiggle your fingers. That looks beautiful. Or, Look yeah. at it. It looks fabulous. Nice. <laughs> Get a screenshot, Sam. Right, yeah, I will do. I will do. Yeah. Cool. All right, Jane, please let me unmute you. Sorry, you've been muted. There we go. Nope. Uh, Jane, you need to unmute yourself. Um, I can't unmute you. I've just uh, sent you a... Uh, <laughs> oh, there's some muting. There we go. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Uh, Sue, I um, nominated you in recognition of the massive support you've given to the Homeless Health Programme and in turn to um, the nurses, not only nationally, but, but in London particularly. And so it's just to recognise how much we value your support and your wisdom and your humour as well, and how you, you do bolster us up in those meetings. And we know that we've got that support and that you do take our issues higher to Crystal and then it goes higher up as well to ministers as well. So we do value you enormously and we just wanted, and particularly I wanted to recognise that. So thank you so much. Um, and you're absolutely fabulous. Thank you, Jane. You're an absolutely fabulous boss as well. <laughs> um, Sue, if you would be able to give us a, a brief few words, that would be amazing. I have just a few words, but I'm absolutely overwhelmed, completely overwhelmed. And thank you, Jane, so much. Um, I, it, it's what a lovely surprise to start the new year and totally unexpected and not really deserved because I'm not a clinician and I'm not out there doing all the good work that you're all doing. And I love the AbFab title. I'm definitely Patsy or I'd like to be Patsy for sure. But um, so you asked me to say a few words about my role really. Um, and for those of you that don't know me, I've been the um, director of nursing programs at the Queen's Nursing Institute since tw uh, 2018. And although I have many aspects to my role, one of the loveliest is to support the Homeless Health Programme and the network, which thanks to Jane and her colleague, um, another Jane, uh, has been established for, I think, uh, probably going on for 14 years now. Yeah. Um, and this programme and network, you know, I've come into it late, but it links people who are working in inclusion health, often alone, so they needed the peer support and, and to share resources and, and to raise the important issues and to be able to influence policy, which is obviously one of the core aims of the q and i I'm really, really lucky to work with Sam, um, who you all know really well, and uh, she's taken over the management of the programme, raising it to much higher levels and, and, and making it very visible. And we are doing more to, to do that as well. And I've, I hope I've been able to support you, Sam, in in bringing together the group of specialist health visitors, for example, who are working with families who are experiencing homelessness. And also another group of really interesting professionals who are um, working with Gypsy Roma Traveller and Bota communities. And that's been really interesting for me to get insight into their role. And we've been able to hear firsthand how COVID's impacted, particularly on the lives of, of these people and communities and their access to healthcare at this time. And, and the imaginative and innovative ways that they've uh, striven really to give the best possible healthcare that they can in these really difficult times. They are remarkable. You are remarkable nurses working with uh, extraordinary individuals and, and their families. And um, yes, as Jane says, we've been able to convey these experiences to policymakers to offer them the evidence and the facts of what's going on out there not work as they imagine it to be but really work that is actually done and that's been so important for us to be able to do that. I think we also played a big part in persuading our CNO to second um, a highly experienced nurse into a new role in her team as the National Homeless Health Nurse Lead and um, which you know is, is very exciting and, and today we've uh, in partnership with MEDACT we've released a petition uh, to ask the government to do more to support the need for healthy housing for those um, who currently lack it. And, and just finally, we've got a lot of great health uh, inclusion resources, um, blogs, publications on our website, and great resource uh, that Sam's put together for nurses who are thinking of working in inclusion health, but just don't know how to get started or where to go for that advice. So thank you, Sam, for pulling that together. It's truly great. 
there is so much more that we can do. There's so much more we need to do. And I really am looking forward to the year ahead and hopefully have some success in securing some more funding to take this program and network forward because it's so needed and it's really important work. So just once again, thank you so much for this totally undeserved award, such a surprise. And um, I'm very humbled and very grateful to the London Network of Nurses and Midwives. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was great, Sue. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, congratulations. So um, now moving on to our next award. Um, this has been um, awarded to Fenella Jolly, who is the clinical nurse manager for the Three Boroughs Health Inclusion Team. I know a lot of people um, on this call know Fenella. Um, so what we're lucky to be able to do for Fenella is um, actually show you an amazing video that her team have put together. Um, so I'm going to uh, share that with you so you can uh, hear about why Fenella has been given this award. We, the Health Inclusion Team, are nominating Finella Jolly for this award, for her leadership, commitment and dedication to patient care. During these challenging times, Fenella has managed the team and its service provision with such care and compassion. She has dealt with so many critical and complex demands and kept our patients at the center of her decisions. Thank you very much, Fenella. Hello, my name is Sandra Urshesan. I'm, uh, I'm nominating Fenella Jolie, our clinical nurse uh, manager for this award. Uh, I've worked across the NHS for 23 years and I've worked across four different uh, trusts and departments. And I can safely say Fenella is the best manager I've had. Fenella is non-judgmental. Fenella treats you according to your need. And she is very good at diffusing situations before they escalate. She's always available for the staff and whatever needs we have and uh, whatever needs we have and this is evident in the staff productivity and retention within the team so I'll, I'll nominate Fenella Jolie. We would like to nominate Fenella for this award because Fenella truly does deserve recognition for the management and team leadership she has facilitated during this uncertain and challenging year. She's been very supportive and kind to all of the team and this has allowed the team to continue outstanding care to vulnerable and marginalised groups throughout London during this pandemic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fenella. Thanks, Fenella. Thank you. So we would like to nominate Fenella uh, because she has facilitated continuous face-to-face -face contact with the most vulnerable people in our society during the COVID uh, crisis. In day centres such as this, where I am today, and she's done it with humour and compassion um, without getting too stressed and she has really looked after all of her staff. So there we go, really quite the uh, amazing nomination. Um, hopefully Fenella is here. Oh. Are you here, Fenella? Can we uh, can we hear a bit from you? I think you're on the list under Fen. Hi. There you go. Hello. Uh, gosh, that's very humbling. Um, Hold on, I'm just going to find you on my list so I can uh, make you big. One second. Okay. Yeah, was, uh, here we go. Yeah, so I'm not really happy. Lovely. There you are. Hi. Congratulations. Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. That's that. That is. That's very humbling, and I'm a little bit lost for words. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, I can sort of echo what Sue was saying in terms of not really feeling like uh, I've done anything other than you know what everybody else has done, which is you know uh, respond respond to this crisis. And I'm amazed across London really um, at the expertise, the compassion, the courage that has been shown across our sector. And I think our sector has shined. It really has in in terms of community services. Um, I, you know, it's been great in terms of like, hearing what other teams are doing and I think the standard is amazing and I just think it, you know, it's reflective of what a skilled area uh, health inclusion is, it, you know, it needs to be, but it is, I think it's sort of, we're setting benchmarks and standards so high um, 
and really establishing what the speciality is of, of, of homeless, uh, of inclusion health. Um, I, you know, I'm very, very, very sort of uh, fortunate to manage the, an amazing team, an amazing team of highly skilled professionals across the whole of the sort of uh, speciality. We cover um, homelessness, asylum seekers, refugees, high intensity users, addiction clients, um, you know we've got professional you know we've got professionals from all of the uh, of all of the um uh, professionals <laughs> um so you know and, and you know i'm a great believer that no one succeeds alone we couldn't have achieved anything if we didn't all work together and um, and that, that's uh, you know i think it's testimony to um uh, to to the services that all joined up um so I'm, I'm very glad to receive the award and I'm, I'm, you know, chuffed, basically, chuffed. I and mean, it's really nice to see that people went to the effort of making a, a, a video. I think I might have heard them doing it and I wonder what they were calling my name for. It's like, <laughs> um, so massive thank you to everybody. And I just, you know, just massive thank you. And we're, we're, hitting, the, we're hitting the sort of the, the final peak, hopefully, and we'll get through the winter. And we'll all be able to sort of meet up next time, hopefully, and actually, you know, do the hands-on hugging because I know I'm desperate to sort of be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, big thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you so much, Fiona. And uh, yeah, congratulations again. Um, okay, so next up, we've got another really very nice video. Um, this one is for two people who were nominated together. Um, this is for Dina Purcell, um, who works with Groundswell, and also for um, Rachel Smith, who's a nurse um, who works in health inclusion. I know a lot of you know both Dina and Rachel. So uh, without further ado, notwithstanding me finding the button, um, Here's the video from Sarah Miles, who did the nomination. Hi, my name is Sarah Miles. I used to be the manager of Ace of Troubles Day Centre. I would like to make two nominations for the Absolute Fabulousness Award this year, please. Um, I would like to nominate Rachel Smith of the Health Inclusion Nursing Team and Dina Purcell from Groundswell. Um, I would like to nominate them both separately and jointly. Uh, separately, um, Rachel is a sterling, absolutely the best nurse. Um, we had this last year at Ace of Clubs, always above and beyond. Um, often there, after she should have left, definitely after the centre left, um, would, was very dedicated to her patients and um, was very dedicated to producing a really unpleasant aroma during leg dressings in this in the uh, nursing room. Dina Purcell, um, I just think she's done a brilliant job at Groundswell and she's really settled in there and I'm just like to say to you, she's been absolutely fabulous in that job. She was at Acer Clubs and maybe that wasn't the right place but definitely Groundswell seems to be the right place for her. And then jointly, they have done a lot of work with a female client who holds a special place in my heart, shall we say. Um, they know who she is and their sterling efforts mean that she is now receiving the treatment um, that she did needs and hopefully will make a full recovery. So uh, those are my nominations. Thank you very much. Great. Congratulations, both of you. I think that we have you both in the room. Um, maybe if I could ask you both to unmute yourselves, you could either uh, take it in turns or you could attempt to, to sort of um, <laughs> do a double header. Um, Dina, I can see you've unmuted Hello. yourself. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so surprised at this. I really was not expecting this, especially the person that nominated me as well. I'm just completely gobsmacked. Um, I did used to work at Acer Clubs and actually left there um, because I sat in the office all day doing benefit forms and I thought, you know, I've got so much more to offer. So I joined Jack Groundswell in um, January, no, February, sorry, as in an employed person after previously volunteering. 
um, and I went to lockdown in March so I thought gosh you know this is quite an unusual job role um, then like now I'm on the project with um, Rachel the nurses and the outreach um, integrated health network network project and I've just you know I'm still obviously I'm only been into this job 10 months and during Covid it obviously has been a bit more difficult and challenging and I've just been absolutely amazed with the people that I'm working with because um, we've all been working collaboratively you know nurses hostel staff um, drug and alcohol services and we've all you know formed this support around the clients and I'm just actually amazed it's not all bad about Covid you know I've noticed that we've been able to engage clients a lot more than I expected and you know the good thing is we're hopefully going to get another year to do this so I'm really excited and looking forward to the next year ahead to help more people <laughs> sorry I'm a bit nervous but thank I know. you so much that's that's no, great thank you so really much Dina. this award it's such a lovely surprise thank you you're yeah no congratulations and, and thank you for sharing with us um rachel can i uh hello yeah, yeah again. Hi, congratulations <laughs> thank you yeah again um i'm so pleased that dina got it it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you over the last year dina it's been amazing really amazing to work with groundswell so closely because we do work with them but to actually see the extent that they go for their patients, it's, it's really brought it home because we've been working so closely together. Um, I, I feel again, I, I didn't know who'd nominated me or why, but I do <laughs> feel like everybody else a little bit like, oh, you know, there could be so many other nurses that I think would be more deserving, particularly in my team, those that have responded to the hotels. And, and I mean, they're doing this on top of their roles. And it's just, it's awe inspiring. And, you know, I, I wrote some words down that I felt this pandemic really brought up for me. It's roller coaster, uh, tiredness, uh, pride, uh, because it's just, you know, amazing to have achieved what we have achieved in the pandemic. Uh, you're on mute, which I think <laughs> will be the quote of 2020. That's what we we'll remember about it. Um, the way that everyone's pulled together and, and again I'm in awe of my colleagues on my team and elsewhere just in awe of what everybody's achieved um, and I'm just so pleased that we've actually been able to especially the no recourse clients the fact that they've been in those hotels we've been able to do so much more with them in such a short time and I've had clients I've known for four or five years and they've been in the hotels and it's changed their lives around you know just because we've, we've got that kind of accommodation first thing so it's been you know, it's had its challenges, but we've seen some really good outcomes for clients. So, yes. Thank you, Sarah Miles. Thank you, everybody. Great. Thanks very much, Rachel. And, yeah, congratulations again. Cool. So, where am I? Here I am. So we've got two more awards. I think I'm actually next going to go to an award for someone who sadly isn't able to join us and then we'll hear from uh, Jane about one more person. So the uh, the next award has been um, given to uh, Mr. Al Story, who I know a lot of people here know very well. Um, we have a little um, video from Sam about why that nomination was made but first I'm going to show you a picture I've been requested to show you <laughs> of um, Al with his awards there you go um, this is Al and this is the uh, the little uh, awards which we uh, provided him with I'll, I'll give you a few seconds with with that lovely image cool and there you go and that's Al um, so I'm just going to um, yeah, play a short video from Sam, um, just outlining why um, Al was nominated and for and received um, this award. Um, Dr. Al Story, nurse, um, our inimitable, reluctant leader who um, obviously was driving force behind the test triage cohort care plan, very much behind COVID care um, and the initial health response within the hotels, which um, I'm sure has saved many lives, but also um, for the night shelter paper and work um, and his latterly 
huge amount of advocacy on that project, um, on the, 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 the kind of project of trying to get everyone in to going um, and keep the night shelters closed for the safety of clients. Um, and Al, um, you know, has always been a cheerleader for the LNM, um, doing our closing speeches, and he did it again this year. So, um, Al, thanks to you. Um, as always, you've been absolutely fabulous. Cool. So, yeah, that's for Al. And uh, I will ensure he gets a recording of the ceremony so he can. Uh, enjoy it and then um the next award is going to be for um caroline shulman who was nominated by jane caroline um has a number of of things that she does but um she is um the acting homeless health gp specialist clinical advisor at healthy london partnership she's a gp with a specialism in homeless and inclusion health um she is apparently also an honorary senior lecturer there's there's a list um i'm sure a lot of you do no, Caroline. Um, so, Jane, if I could uh, pass over to you again, and if you could just say a few words about why you, you nominated Caroline, that would be great. Yes, yes I nominated Caroline um, for several reasons. I've known Caroline for quite a number of years when I was thinking about um, what I was going to say. So I first met Caroline at Mare Street Hostel in Hackney, and she was the GP at the Greenhouse, and she came in when we were running the hospital discharge service then and was just so supportive to um, the staff there, the health staff. Um, and it was a very new, it was a new service, but nothing too much trouble. And just the care she gave to every individual client there um, did go above and beyond. And then I worked with Caroline when she was working at King's College Hospital in the, in the hospital discharge team as well. And again, just her energy and enthusiasm and her dedication was just phenomenal. And over so many years as well, that commitment to um, the service that was provided to people who were experiencing homelessness and some of the most complex cases that um, she saw. And, and then again, in, during her, her research that's been ongoing around end of life care, and she's taken that to really high level and the especially around the the models that are that have been developed in uh in two hostels in tower hamlets and and her work is having a huge impact especially uh, around end of life care and raising it to a new level where it should be that this is a such a crucial issue for the clients we work with who had often gone unrecognized by wider services, but she's really brought that model of partnership working to the fore. And then in her in the her role within the last 10 months, especially and at the Healthy London Partnership, providing that clinical leadership again with enthusiasm, dedication, always approachable, um, you know, and always um, able to offer solutions and be very wise in the advice she gives and so Caroline thank you so much and what a difference you make and you are absolutely fabulous so thank you yeah thank you Caroline and congratulations um if you are able to say a few words that would be great let me just uh if I can you um thank you, you. no thank you so much thank you Jane for those words and 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 really and thank you so much for this award I like everyone, I, I have spoken, I feel so overwhelmed. I feel really, really touched at having been uh, nominated for this. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you how much it's... Um, and I also feel that I'm sort of, I'm working amongst giants, really. And I really do feel that, you know, virtually everybody on this call has probably done loads more than me for this group. And, and I feel there are so many people who are just doing the most incredible work and going way over and above and I just love this sector I love homelessness I working with people you know around this you know in this room I think you know I I, I don't think you could hope to work with people who are more compassionate and more committed um, and and really out to get the absolute 
best outcome that they possibly can. And I think this last year has, has really pulled that together. It's really demonstrated the sector at this, with this extraordinary drive and commitment to make things better. Um, and I think it's also because of how we all are, it's also been a really hard year. And I think we have to recognise how difficult it's really, really been for all of us because we've seen the opportunities that the Everyone In had. And we always felt more could be done, more could be done. And we put that all on ourselves, we put that on. And I think that's been, I think that's, that's really hard. So I think we need to all give ourselves and the most incredible kind of clap you know about how incredible you've all been and um and how many lives have been saved and how many lives have really um been supported to be turned around it'll never be enough i mean we'll never be able to do it in you know to do enough because while there are still people who are experiencing homelessness there's going to be more to do and you know you know it would be really, wouldn't it be utopia if we were all out of work um but you know we just have to keep on keep on going and and keep on being kind and compassionate to each other and i think we've seen that really in this last year the support that's been um shared amongst others so my role um i suppose it's been a really strange role for me with healthy london partnership i just sort of drifted into this role and i'm i'm not officially kind of there i mean i'm i'm sort of I'm, I'm, I just saw there was a bit of a, there felt to be a little bit of a gap, a gap between what's happening on the ground and clinicians' voice really being heard by commissioners and people developing strategy. So it's sort of, I sort of floated into this slightly strange role, um, which I think I found really hard. And I think the reason I found it really, really hard is because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that frontline work and I feel guilty all the time and I feel there's always more I should be doing and could be doing. Um, so that's why getting this award is sort of really very, very moving because um, I don't feel I've done anything really. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm, um, yeah, I don't know what else I can say except that I guess we're all reaching, reaching for the sky and I think, you know, onwards and upwards and we've somehow just got to keep going and get through this next really, really difficult time that we're, that, that we're facing, that our, that our, our, our patients, our clients, our, our friends, our colleagues are all, all facing. Um, and, uh, and really, oh, and I should show you this, this arrived today. <laughs> oh, isn't it gorgeous? It's sitting right next to me on my desk. So, Thank you all so, so much. And thank you, Jane, for nominating me. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, congratulations. Um, that is great to hear. Um, cool. We are nearly done. There is one more person um, who I think might not be here. Um, <laughs> no, she, she, I believe she is here. So Max is nodding. I believe she is here. Yeah, so carry on. Lovely, cool. In which case, this is the uh, this is the surprise award, and uh, the surprise award is being given to um, Yasmin, who is one of our um, trustees, um, and who I think most of you probably know. Um, Yasmin was nominated by Sam, um, and so I am going to play a video of Yasmin. Sorry, of Sam nominating Yasmin. Um, next, lovely years. Um, what an incredible small bundle of energy Yaz is on her bike and um, she came out of me a couple of weeks ago um, on outreach and what a kind bundle of energy she is and how she always goes the extra mile because she came out and did a covid test and one of my clients were struggling to get that sorted but um god um yeah as is so dedicated she's incredible she never ever stops um you know despite i think it was breaking a collarbone she's still on her bike you know zooming around um and obviously she's been running and supporting the testing program via um, find and treat 
as well as keeping all the other kind of usual stuff going. Um, been running COVID care. Um, I know she's absolutely exhausted. Um, so just yeah, I just wanted you to know that that we've all noticed how absolutely brilliant and incredible you are and how you keep everything going and how everybody depends on you and we love you loads so there you go yeah there you go um so yasmin i'm not sure whether you want to say anything um because this has just been uh, sprung on you <laughs> um so if you would like to say a few words please do unmute yourself and uh It'd be great to hear from you, but also if uh, if that's all a bit much and sudden, then that's fine. I wonder, Yaz, if you can, may maybe you can't say anything, but you perhaps put something in the in the chat if you can't. But I really, really hope you heard that. Should we give her another second? I don't know. Uh, if she didn't, I'll, uh, well, we can send to the recording. <laughs> okay, so we're coming towards the end i hope everybody really enjoyed that yeah surprise report <laughs> that surprise yeah <laughs> this really is just a few seconds just to just to say that we have just published our report that came out of the symposium it should be up on our website soon there's loads of recommendations as as caroline has said god that you know there's been so much hasn't there and it was really hard to encapsulate it um i think some of the key recommendations were around providing training to all post uh, pre and post registration staff on inclusion health tackling digital exclusion you know and doing research on the demise of drop-in services and what impact that's going to have on um vulnerable groups research as well into the changes in delivery and addiction services and, and and what that means long term and also smoking cessation treatment um something around data sharing because i think data sharing hasn't helped during this this pandemic and there's still a long way to go um but also very very simply at the end of it how important good quality housing is and i know that sounds a really really silly thing but it's so so important isn't it um the importance of delivering quality housing and delivering mental health and physical outcomes and also just a little plug for us this is being videoed but you know hopefully as well um some recognition of the fact that clinical networks are really important but that the london network is also really important in keeping together people together at times like this and giving out information just um I'm going to hand over to Jane to bring the event to a close in a minute, just to profile two really important upcoming events. So on the 20th of January, lovely, lovely Rosa is launching her street outreach guidance. Um, we're really, really lucky to have Ruth May, the Chief Nursing Officer for England, coming to do the first session on that day. Um, and we've got lots of other senior colleagues um, presenting on that day about their street outreach interventions and also Fiona Bateman doing a summary of safeguarding law and there'll be a panel discussion. Um, we're already up to 250 people booked into that event. Um, so that's really, really amazing. Um, brilliant for Rosa, um, but that just shows how important it is. So thank you to Rosa for that. Um, Secondly, on the 9th of February, um, the wonderful MEDACT are doing some training on lobbying, advocacy, you know, how we can try and make organisational and system change. Um, so please do attend that. We're going to have another big event in March. We haven't quite decided what it is yet. So if anybody's got any big ideas, let us know. Um, maybe it will be on tissue viability. Maybe it will be on autism. Maybe it will be on smoking cessation. Could be any of those things. Um, but just the last slide from me, Sue did mention this. Um, so Q and I, a group of health visitors, some of whom I know are on the call today, um, have put together this petition with MEDACT. Um, there's also been a letter that's gone to government ministers, but it, it really is about thinking, there needing to be an inquiry 
about homeless families living in temporary accommodation and, and the flight that they are currently living under. Um, there aren't any current standards, there's lots of people um, still staying in temporary accommodation far too long, being placed out of borough, being in hopefully substandard accommodation. Um, so please do sign the petition, set, tell your friends, um, and also come to the to the MEDAC training because maybe you've got something that you really want to push um, and they can help get behind you. Okay. I'll just um, quickly uh, chip in and say I've put the links for the uh, symposium report and tickets for Rosa's uh, street outreach event in the chat and the MEDAC ticket for the MEDACT event will be released on Monday um, so if you aren't signed up to our emails uh, sign up to them and uh, we'll send the link around when they're available. And just the last thing from me if anybody did want to stay so Jane's going to bring the event to a close but if anybody did want to stay on and get an update or <laughs> as, as update as possible about what might be happening now and everyone into you're more than welcome because I'll be staying on but I'm going to hand over to Jane now. Uh, thanks Sam. Yeah, thank you all for attending this event. It's been absolutely inspirational and at the end of a really, you know, um, at times very trying day, it, this has just lifted, I know, my spirits and just to be reminded that you're not on your own, even if you're sitting in your lounge, that there are all these other people out there who are doing this incredible work alongside um, all of us. And so thank you all and thank you um, for all that you do, each one of you. It is noted, it is recognised, you're all absolutely fabulous, but special congratulations to all of the winners. And um, yeah, I look forward to the day that we can see each other in person, but tears won't be around, you know, tier five, but it will be around cake. And also the bubbles will be in a glass and not thinking about having to be in our little bubbles. And so I just really look forward to the day and I know it is coming now we've got the, the vaccine, the vaccines out there. Um, I do think on reflection of this afternoon and how inspiring it was, I do think this, the chief nursing officer and her team need to see this video, just how amazing nurses are who and you know other healthcare professionals who are working in this field, just the amazing work that they've done in often very, very difficult and challenging circumstances, but the difference that they've made. The other thing I was thinking about after hearing Fenella speak is that, um, and I know this is something that we've discussed at the Q&I, and I know there was something we'll probably continue discussing with Sue and Crystal, that this is a, an area of nursing that is specialist and it needs to be recognized as such health inclusion. And with the wider, um, group. So homeless families, travellers, gypsies and boaters, sex workers, vulnerable migrants, you know, all the work we do in asylum seekers, this needs to be recognised within its own right. Those advanced assessment skills, advanced communication skills and you know what a difference everybody makes in the work they do every day and particularly in this time of the pandemic. So thank you all for all what you do. It's just absolutely incredible and fabulous. And yeah, when we meet, we'll be enacting, I think, absolutely fabulous in many ways. So thank you. And it's been a great afternoon. That's great. Thank you, Jane. And yeah, thank thanks, you. everybody. If you do want to all unmute so you can clap now, it won't be a, a problem, so feel free. Um, but yeah, as Sam says, if anybody wants to stay on, um, then do. And um, whoever made the video for Fenella, I thought that was absolutely fabulous. If you want a job yeah. putting videos together, that'd be great. Uh, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> it was Frank. Okay, well, so, so well done to Frank. That was really good going. Was Frank here? It was a very good video. Anyway. Very good. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it needs a wider audience. So I'm sure we're going to put it on the website. Yeah, so we'll stick it on YouTube and link again. it. I'm going to stop recording now so that it, yeah. this can uh, stop being recorded.